Bitcoin has once again reclaimed $70,000 and we have just under or 10 days and three hours left until the Bitcoin halving countdown does reach its end again. That is where the Bitcoin miners reward divides in two, which creates a little bit of a supply shock into the rest of the market. And historically, that is usually where the real bull market begins as soon as we cross that halving cycle mark. So. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to in today's show. We're going to assess why Bitcoin could experience a massive, massive short squeeze, possibly one of the biggest short squeezes we've ever seen in Bitcoin's history. I have new data, which I'm going to bring to your attention today, uh, which will show you exactly how this will happen. I'll give you a trigger plan as well on how you can know exactly when to go long in this type of environment. Uh, and we're going to, of course, look at the altcoin sector and which altcoins could be next to run. So let me know in the poll section as well below. Uh, smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel and then go through over there. Will Bitcoin pump or dump into the halving cycle, uh, which takes place in 10 days time? Uh, cast your votes over there, pump, dump or sideways. Let me know. I want to know your guys thoughts. We know that historically leading into the halving event, uh, it can be very, very, very choppy. So uh, will we be above 70,000 or below 70,000? Uh, cast your vote below and then let's look at the banter bubbles over here. You can see if we go into the hourly time frame, most of the coins are starting to bounce over there in the top 100 turning green which is looking good uh, the daily as well picking back up with those gains uh, the weekly still slightly red uh, and the monthly is half and half the strong coins remain green and the weaker coins are still in the red so let's see is this going to be the end of the prolonged consolidation or the correction and are we going to move up well there's a lot of interesting things taking place within the market uh, one of which we can mention over here is from a high time frame basis as per the usual Let's talk to the investors first, then we'll talk to the swing traders, and then we'll go into the low, low time frame traders who are day trading the market. So uh, investors, you'll be looking at things like this, right? Now, a lot of people use the Bollinger Bands and they'll say, well, the top side is resistance and the bottom side is support. But when you're in a strong trending market, uh, price tends to gravitate above those upper Bollinger Bands over here. As you can see previously, Ted uh, or te Tech Dev at least over here outlines that Bitcoin has closed two consecutive months now above the top Bollinger Band. And if you look at what happened in the prior times, Bitcoin doubles within three months uh, before you do see the next red candle. So here it was the first cycle uh, in 2013. You close above it, two consecutive candles above the top Bollinger Band. And then it tends to base off of that top Bollinger Band, holding it as support, continuing very, very quickly. We went up 200% in just one month. The second time that happened was in 2017. We went up 94% in two months. And then in 2021, 105% in three months. So that shows two things for you. Well, you're in a strong uptrend is the first thing. And the second thing, when the Bollinger Band start to expand and open up like that, it shows you that you're in a volatility expansion phase, which is further evidence that it's a strong training move and you don't want to fade that move so all in all that's something that's looking good now we'll go over the invalidation zones as well this is just another chart to give you the similarities in price action to what we saw all the way back in 2021 look at that consolidation into the uh, parallel channel rising towards the upside in that mid-level consolidated over there near those prior all-time highs if you look to the left hand side and that consolidation led to a big expansive move right Again, what do the Bollinger Bands tell you? As they spread out and open up from one another, that shows you that you, you're about to move into that expansive phase. So that is your high time frame analysis. Now, where are we within the cycle compared to the prior cycles? We're currently following the purple trajectory. This is how uh, your return on investment looked in the prior cycles once Bitcoin had put in its bottom. This cycle, the bottom was $15,500, give or take, and that's where we're at, right? So we still yet to see uh, the final blow-off top phase of the cycle. We haven't even nearly reached that level yet. So looking good. Looking good for continuation. Now, I love this tweet over here from Mike Alfred. He says it really, really well. He says that I've spent the weekend doing an exhaustive analysis of Bitcoin's fundamental and technicals, and I've determined that Bitcoin has approximately $11,420 uh, of downside. That's not a target of $11,420, but further from current price action to the downside, which would put it uh, approximately at $58,000 is your worst case scenario, right? Whilst 
the upside uh, could send it to $245,805. So a, a cycle high price target of almost $250,000 in the next 12 uh, or nine to 12 months. This is an asymmetrical bet, which is rarely seen in financial history. And he says of there, be smart out there. And I think for the high time frame traders or investors, that is really something you need to consider, right? Ultimately, uh, this is not the point in the market cycle where you want to be shaken out or try get too clever uh, selling high to only buy back lower around 50K. I've been there, I've done that, I've got the t-shirt and trust me, it's really not worth it. The best thing that you can do right now is sit on your hands in your current positions and find new capital that you can allocate into under valued coins or projects because when Bitcoin does start to expand, it's going to move very, very quickly. So we've given you the invalidation zone, right? He said about $58,000. That's more or less in line with my downside targets over here, right? If you look at Bitcoin, you can see, well, we now back again above the prior all-time highs. And I told you, once we eventually and successfully flip the prior all-time high at $69,000 into support, that is going to create a very, very powerful springboard and it's gonna send price aggressively towards the upside. Your downside levels, well, you're gonna be looking at very strong support down here at $59,000, which is of course in alignment with what Mike Alfred's uh, analysis is and what he says over there, because that lines up with your 21 exponential moving average, the yellow one, which is currently rising and meets up at that exact same point. So there's really two paths for Bitcoin over here. Path one is the consolidation over here, which will lead to later expansion in the same way that we saw back in 2021. And then path two would be, well, maybe you do experience a little bit of a deeper pullback at which point you get $58,000 and you don't get shaken out of the positions that you've held all the way since the bottom when you were trading alongside us on this channel but instead you allocate new capital uh, that you've been building a cash position in if you do see that, right? So if that happens and the downside target plays out and you go down like this, well, you can also see that is a massive cup and handle formation, which is a bullish chart pattern, which ultimately would lead to those massive upside targets in the region of about 150 to $200,000. Let's not focus on the upside target right now. Let's think about the downside uh, levels in case of an invalidation. So an invalidation would be price pulling down and holding underneath that $59,000 level for prolonged periods of time. That will start to lead to a much, much deeper correction, which is not not what we're seeing right now. So you can see there, full trend in motion. We're starting to create a new strong base of support over here. If you look at Bitcoin on the uh, five day time frame, we still have one day and 17 hours left to close these candles. And for the time being, it's in a full on bullish posture, right? What does that look like? Well, if we take the price away, a full on bullish posture would be where price is holding above the short, the medium and the high time frame moving average. And all of those are angled towards the upside and it gets more and more bullish as they spread apart, right? So as the yellow starts to move away from the green and price starts to spread, that's where you get into those very, very, very strong trending moves, which is currently what we're seeing, right? So if Bitcoin could start to close at these levels over here, then we have a new horizontal, uh, which will be the next level of support, right? We can start to move that up. It's a bit too soon to do that. Let's wait for the five day close, but if we do close over here, you can expect expansion from that level very, very soon. And then you can see how beautifully it ties in with it, all the other prior analysis on the high time frames that we're looking at over there. So that's what we're viewing. And on the daily, this is what we're seeing, right? Uh, we have a converging consolidation into what's also known as, of course, a bull pennant. So you have a preceding trend, which has started to move towards the upside. Price action then consolidates into a tight wedge and later on it has to leave that wedge right so it's either going to move to the upside or the downside if it is the downside remember the low side target is going to be fifty-eight thousand dollars, where we expect a major bounce from there but the preceding trend has been up therefore the probability is much higher that price is going to explode towards the upside like this fractal shows now looking at the rsis as well uh, this was from the prior cycle over here 
You can see breaking through that downsloping trend line on the RSI, uh, that led to the next price move towards the upside. We're in a very, very similar place right now, and I can show you over here. There's two things to note with the RSI. Number one, right now, live on the show, we're starting to break uh, or see the very etchings of that uh, up or the downsloping trend line breaking. So prices moving through the top side. Watch for the moving average to cross through that downsloping trend line on the daily RSI. If that closes, if you have daily candles uh, that allow for that, that moving average, which is the yellow one, to close above, well, that confirms a successful breakout. That's point one. Point two, we know that historically, uh, Bitcoin has found in a bull market on the RSI bottoms around that 50 mark. So you can see the double bottom on the RSI over here and the, now already the start of the break of that downsloping trend line. So all in all, that's looking good. This should allow for price to break key levels, which here they are. We are on our way there. This is the plan, right? We had the plan since last week. All of you remember you're in the Discord as well. For those of you in the Discord, you'd know that we said we're looking at sometime early, well, next week, which is now this week, or over the course of this weekend, which we just had, where we would see price play this out. That's why we went long from down here, right? Just below $60,000 is where we took our long position um, and it's starting to play out now. Now, if we can get above $71,400, that should allow the RSI to reclaim key levels moving higher. Currently, we are above the pivot level, meaning that RSI will continue to trend towards the upside, and that will allow for bulls to shift momentum. Now, we'll get into the next bit in just a moment where I show you why and how we could experience one of the biggest short squeezes we've ever seen, and that allows for that parabolic trend to unfold, right? Which is what we saw also in the prior cycle. So going back onto the uh, price action chart over here, uh, price is now above the nine and the 18 exponential moving average on the daily timeframe. We also on the low timeframes above the 200 EMA, which is on our one hour and our four hour timeframe, which means that really the trend is your friend until the very end and it's onwards and upwards. A break above this will negate the prior uh, lower high which we set meaning that we have higher low higher low new higher high so it's a break of structure confirmation of the breakout from the bull pennant and then you'll see the sentiment shift bullish very very quickly back into the market but i do also want to bring to your attention and a reminder that later on this week, uh, we do have high impact economic data, which is going to be coming out on Wednesday, which could affect the market. So that could be a scenario for a trap. But on the high time frame, why could we see this massive short squeeze? Well, if you look at this data over here, this is looking at the hedge funds versus uh, the institutional funds, which have been, of course, or the, the institutions which have been buying up Bitcoin. On the top over here is the asset managers in the blue line, which have been allocating into spot Bitcoin. Now, typically for bull runs, you want to be trading in line with the trend and you want to be trading in line with what spot or the spot market is doing, right? The spot market being the underlying assets. So those buying the actual Bitcoin. And you can see this has been trending towards the upside. But if you look at the leverage, which is the hedge funds, they've been shorting the market for quite some time, right? They are extremely, extremely underwater. They have literally been shorting the market since June of 2023, all the way to current levels. And they're adding more and more to their short positions. That is an absolutely disaster in the making for these hedge funds. They're going to get completely blown out of the water. Now, many of you out there might think that hedge funds is a fancy word and they're smart and they know exactly what they're doing. But I can tell you that most hedge funds, more than 80% of hedge funds, cannot even outperform the S&P 500. Hedge funds go broke all the time. They blow up their funds all the time. Go and look at the statistics, go and look at the data. You do not wanna be trading in line with the hedge funds. You wanna be trading in line with the trend. And it absolutely blows my mind. I don't know where they find these hedge fund managers, but they continue to blow up accounts. So asset managers allocating into institutions, buying up Bitcoin aggressively is moving towards the upside. I'm betting that this is gonna blow the hedge funds out of the water, creating a massive short squeeze. They'll have to cover those shorts, right? Remember, they've been underwater since June of 2023. That is a very, very, very long period of time, almost one year of underwater positions, which is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And they keep having to add more to their short positions to keep 
keep the position open. Eventually, they're gonna have to capitulate. Imagine being short into all-time highs, into price discovery. Ludicrous, insanity, mad. Here you have another data point over here from Zero Hedge. Head trends pile into shorts for four straight days and eight consecutive weeks as shorts outpace longs five to one. So big, big short squeeze incoming for the markets in my personal opinion. Now we need to tie it in with the low time frames, right? The short time frames. This is the four hour time frame. Probably the this will be the lowest time frame that I'll look at in a strong trending bull market. Now, what are we seeing over here? First thing that we can note, this is where we went long. Remember, we said this is the most obvious place to go long. Expect the deviation back above the 200 exponential moving average on the four hour time frame. We got that, we built our long positions over there. Stop losses are below and price gravitated onwards and upwards. We have a very clear formed range over here, which is ultimately uh, forming uh, part of the bull pennant or bull flag, right? So we've reclaimed the mid range, we're now heading towards the top side. Now, if we break and we hold above the top side as per the green trajectory over here, we can make it nice and big for you to see, as per the green trajectory over here, that will signify that uh, Bitcoin is gaining acceptance above the range high on a low time frame. And as a range trader, the way that you trade that, as long as it gains and holds acceptance above that range high level, you wanna remain long and strong and continue to longer towards the upside. But if price breaks down and starts to close underneath that level again, well, this is still a possibility, right? If you lose the $73,000 mark, we're always expecting a sweep of that level. It's just the question of what happens following the sweep of that level. Do we sweep and deviate back below gaining acceptance underneath the range high? At which point, it's probably a profit-taking opportunity, not necessarily a massive shorting opportunity, but a profit-taking opportunity where it will come back to support into the, uh, the mid-range level, which lines up with all of our different EMAs, which is fully bullish, right? You have the 21 yellow, which is now crossed back above the red 50, which is above the blue 200. And that's a bullish trend, right? But we're still in a consolidation phase of the market. So this is what we're looking at. I hope this all makes sense. I'm really trying to tie it all in for you to understand exactly uh, what's taking place here in the market. So far, so good. Look at Bitcoin Go. The move is continuing towards the upside. Now, I'm still long. Okay, I'm gonna have to sign in on this. Just give me a second. I see I got signed out of my um, my account over there. So in the meantime, while I sign in, oh man, this is such a mission. I have to put everything in. One second, guys, one second. Um, smash the like button, guys, while I quickly log in here. We just wanna go over all the leverage trades. Let me grab the 2FA. Please smash the like button. Also, um, let me know in the comment section which altcoins you want to have a look at uh, for today's show. We're gonna do altcoin requests as well in just a moment. Let me just quickly uh, get my 2FA in here. Okay, one sec, one sec, I got it wrong. Under pressure, under pressure here, it, it ran out of time. Okay, that should be it. All right, while we log back in, there it is. So these are all the current trades, right? These are all the current trades that we have open. I'm continuing to hold all of these long positions. Here's all my trades. We're currently holding 15 trades open. Some we've closed along the way. We took profits on some of them, uh, but the ones that have been moving, we've given a chance to, to continue, right? Uh, the sentiment is fully re reset, things like near up 3,400%, that's a $20,000 position over there. Uh, we have WIF as well, look at that position, up 41,000%. And it continues to amaze me when I look at this WIF trade because the sentiment is fully reset on the meme coin sector, we're gonna touch on that a little bit today as well, uh, in the sense that people think, well, you know, prices are lower, but it's not. I've kept this position open forever and it just keeps growing and growing and growing, getting higher and higher. And this is the power of leaving these positions open and building positions over time, right? Uh, we got seller up 1,400%, huge positions over here. What is this one? Uh, Pepe up 7,800%. Uh, we have Aptos up 1,000%, so pretty substantial positions. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if we do see a deviation of the top of the range high, I may consider closing some of these 
in the event that we go into a prolonged pullback or consolidation, the funding rates will end up eating me alive, right? So that would be under the guise of something like this happening where you deviate and things get a little bit more bearish on the timeline into the halving cycle and we pull back towards $58,000. I'll rather reload the funding rates will become very, very expensive for me to continue to hold that position open. So don't confuse that with me closing out my spot positions. Buy bit, I have all the leverage positions and BitGet, I have some of the spot positions which are open over here. These I'll continue to leave on the table, right? Absolutely no point in closing the BitGet spot positions. Now, also, make sure that you participate in the winner Bitcoin competition, right? So if you are trading on Bybit and BitGet alongside me. Well, if you go through to the winner Bitcoin, that means that you have the exchanges which qualify you to participate in the winner Bitcoin, which is coming up, right? So we only have a couple of days left, guys. May the 15th, all you need to do is use the links in the description below, sign up to those exchanges. Each one gives you the opportunity to guess the price. So if you sign up to Bybit, BitGet, OKX, Evo, BingX, CoinW, those are each uh, respectively their own entries into the winner Bitcoin competition. And the closest guess for the Coinbase price as the clock strikes 12 on May the 15th this year will win one full Bitcoin, right? But you need to take 10 trades. You win, I think you win half a Bitcoin if you don't do the 10 trades. You win the full Bitcoin if you do take 10 trades. So have a look at that. Please, please take advantage of this competition. I think it's one of the biggest competitions. At this rate, you're going to be winning over $70,000, right? So good luck. Good luck to everybody that's participating in that. Um, let's continue. Let's continue. Another reason for the short squeeze is the funding rates, which have completely reset. Uh, all in all, this is looking good. It shows there's a lot of open interest that can still come back into the market to get prices higher. Look at that. Funding rate heat map fully, fully reset. Uh, we in price discovery right now, pretty much. Uh, Bitcoin is in the price discovery phase, but still nobody's really long, right? They're too scared to be long. Here you have your price moving towards the upside in line with what we're seeing with this data um, as per uh, what the uh, the funds are doing, the asset managers versus the hedge funds. You can see it's showing exactly the same thing, right? Spot increasing towards the upside. Leverage has been short for the last couple of days and these guys will have to close their positions, thus creating a squeeze towards the upside. So um, also, if you look over here, trading light, there is something to see over here, which is going to be, of course, uh, the price action that's coming up soon. Uh, $75,000, we have 344 Bitcoin for sale at that exact level. And that's where you need to be careful that you don't get that deviation uh, as per this chart, right? The deviation back into the range. So we're getting into an exciting part of the market cycle. It is definitely getting interesting. Uh, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones, have not yet broken down. They did create new swing lows, but they've broken back towards the upside. Uh, this week will be interesting. Let's see, leading into the high impact economic data, if it can hold up, if it can, expect again, that short squeeze is probable. Now, if we look at total three for the altcoin market cycle, you can expect two major phases for the next uh, upcoming weeks and months for the altcoins. Two big expansive phases, right? Round one, is gonna be where we break back above this level. So let's quickly go to it. If we break back above $820 uh, billion, that's where you're gonna see the altcoins really start to aggressively move towards the upside. And then when we break the prior all-time high at $1.7 trillion, that will lead to the second leg up for those altcoins. So we've spoken about the altcoins moving up in three phases, right? You have uh, the first phase, which is currently this one over here. Then at some point you'll get a pullback. Um, this is as per Elliott wave count, right? Phase one up, phase two down. Phase three is the big one towards the upside. Phase four slightly down. And then you lead into phase five, which is that blow off top phase. We currently have only completed pretty much phase one for the altcoin market, right? So there's a lot of upside potential. So we'll go into some of those coins. Again, please drop the coins that you want. And also let's review here. Let's review the poll section. So we have how many of you have voted? Okay, 2,220 votes over there. Will Bitcoin pump or dump into the halving cycle in 10 days time? Let's review the poll results. 55% of you believe it's gonna pump, 20% believe dump, 
and then the other 25% of you think sideways. So let's see, only time will tell. So majority are believing that we're gonna break out. Now, if we look at what the retail market participants are doing, the true, true, true retail, they don't even download an exchange. They only uh, have things like Robinhood. Their BTC holdings have been increasing, right? They've increased by 14% on Robinhood in the last six months, but ETH has decreased by 9%. So retail users are beginning to come back to crypto, just not in ETH. And ETH has been in a pretty tough spot, right? Making uh, lows last seen 1,000 days ago. So three-year lows, pretty significant. And a lot of the market's starting to pay attention. This is what happened previously, right? Uh, ETH BTC bottomed at the halving in the last cycle. Um, and then it 4 x in the next year, 365 days later, it moved back towards the top of the range high. So let's see, let's see, we'll keep an eye out on this. And a lot of traders are starting to take note, right? So let's see if this, if this would provide a similar result. Let's just quickly grab our tool. So we're at these lows. Let's just say hypothetically, it moved up from here to the top side of the range. That would be the equivalent, not quite a 4X, but 70% against Bitcoin if it were to make it back in the next year towards the top of the range high. This is the level that you need to focus on when it comes to the ETH BTC chart. Uh, all you need to do now is focus on 0 0.050. That's the level to reclaim, right? Anything underneath that is bearish. Anything above that gives the chance for a bear trap and a deviation, which as you can see, Peter Brunt, legend trader over here, even outlines bear trap as a possibility. He says over here that um, often, when price hits a 35 month low, there is always the possibility of a bear trap taking place, sweeping below that range. If you reclaim above, uh, pay attention, that could be the bear trap scenario. Now you've had an increase as well. A lot of uh, whales have been taking advantage, adding massive, massive positions, uh, tens of thousands of Ethereum into, uh, into their portfolio, based on this recent dip that we've had, right? So I think for ETH, it's more, more so a proxy for what's gonna happen for the rest of the market. And I wrote something about that in the Discord over the course of the weekend. Oh, let's just quickly go to that. I wrote something in the Discord over the course of the weekend about ETH BTC. Uh, there was an update over there, uh, basically suggesting that, um, you know, at some point in the cycle, it's likely that ETH is gonna be at $10,000. And if you look at the spot ETF uh, probability, at least in accordance with what BlackRock have filed for in the past, they have an approval rate of 576 to one. They've only lost one and they've won 576. So eventually, eventually you are going to see uh, the spot ETF take place, right? And that should get Ethereum up towards that $10,000 uh, mark. So anything near that $3,000 mark, if you're a safe trader and you wanna size up with low risk, well, that's an easy three extra turn for you on something like ETH. So here it is, a lot of traders, right? A lot of traders taking note, third time lucky, longing the 0 0.05 generational bottom. Uh, this is the long-term trading range for uh, the ETH BTC chart. Bitcoin dominance still increasing towards the top side. You'll remember we've had our criteria for how we viewed the Bitcoin dominance, but on a high time frame, monthly scale, also dropped an analysis on that in Whale Room. Uh, we are coming into a very, very key level uh, where hopefully we can start to see a rejection and ultimately altcoins will start to take over. So um, for the full analysis, go into the Discord. Now, um, you can see that on CNBC, a lot of the market is starting to position into the far right side highest risk plays. And there's a very simple reason for that. Have a look at this video over here uh, with, who's that, who is he? He is, he is our mascot and longtime ambassador, uh, Anthony Pompliano, um, giving, <laughs> giving a talk over here, what's going on within the markets. I'm saying well, what you're calling out is just a societal trend, right? We've become a society of gamblers. If you, if you think about it, we have zero day options. Now we're more than 50% of options trading. We have sports betting, right? We have meme coins trading like 1980s boiler room, you know, uh, penny stocks. This is all happening. And so again, why is that occurring? The dollar has lost 25% of its purchasing power in four years. We have $1.1 trillion of uh, credit card debt. We have 43 million Americans that have federal student debt. The average balance is $37,000. People have lost hope. They do not have hope. How are you supposed to live in a country where it is cheaper to rent than buy a home in 50 major metros? 
you don't have hope. And so what do you do? You, you, you think gamble. this is a lottery ticket? This is a gamble. I, I think that if you go and you buy a lottery ticket, it's 300 million to one odds. I think there's people right now saying, you know what? A meme coin has better odds than a, a lottery ticket. I think there's a lot of people who say, pick, pick, pick your assets. If you want to pick your I'm saying well, so what you're calling out is just without a, a doubt, it is a little bit of a game of musical chairs, but the truth be told, you probably have a better chance of making money in these uh, meme coins or even lower cap altcoins than what you do in uh, the casinos, right? Well, you have very little chance in a casino over here. You can at least decide uh, based on the chart what the probabilities look like. So it drastically increases the opportunity. And if we look at what's happening within that meme coin sector, I've always said to you guys for quite a long period of time uh, to kind of understand whether it's going to be continued risk towards the upside, meaning prices are going to continue to gravitate higher and higher. All you need to do is look at what's happening within Dogecoin, right? Think of Dogecoin as Bitcoin, but for the meme coin sector. So we always look to Bitcoin to understand, well, if Bitcoin's going up, altcoins are probably going to go up quicker than what Bitcoin is. If Bitcoin's going to go down, we know altcoins are going to go down quicker. So you use Dogecoin to understand what's going to happen with the rest of the meme coin sector. And Dogecoin is looking good, right? This has been our significant level that we wanted to see held, uh, which was 19.4, right? 0 0.194. Um, that's just under 20 cents. Uh, we came back below it creating a higher low and pushing back towards the upside. So all in all, that's looking good. The next move most likely is going to take it all the way up to 33 cents. And I actually think a $1 doge within this cycle uh, is very, very, very possible, especially once Elon Musk starts to uh, post and hint again at what's happening within the market. Now, don't mistake in this. You don't want Elon Musk to actually integrate uh, Dogecoin payments into X or Twitter. That's probably going to be a top signal. Uh, it's better to leave the imagination of the retail to run wild of when it may come and what may happen and let that excitement build. And consequently, Dogecoin can start to price in getting towards that $1 mark. So keep that in the back of your mind. A lot of traders noticing Dogecoin over here saying, uh, try not to screw this one up, fellas, because you have the super guppy indicator on a high time frame, weekly scale, flipping bullish for Dogecoin, right? That is flip completely green. This is where you start to see those parabolic moves take place. We've only seen this happen a couple of times in the history of Dogecoin, and every single time it's very, very, very significant. So this is where the millions are being made. So faded at your own peril, right? That is ultimately what we have. You have Ansem over here also showing that the key range level has been flipped. Also on a high time frame, a weekly scale, back testing into the range high, holding it as support. And he's targeting over here up to 48 cents. So my target's a little bit lower than that, but nevertheless, it's suggesting continued upside momentum. So we have a bunch of the meme coins. The top one that we've been trading uh, for the last couple of weeks was given on the 1st of April all the way down here. Um, and that, that is Tuka Colson. Go check out their Twitter. They're doing really phenomenal stuff. The beauty of it is I think they'll never run out of content, right? Because they can essentially do what we're doing over here, but in meme form, if it's other news related stuff, they can do what actual uh, Tucker would be doing. They can do what Mario Nofal is doing. They can replicate a lot of these different people and just report on the biggest news driven events, but in meme form, it's amazing. I think this one really has legs, right? 3,500 holders, um, breaking out right now of a massive bull flag. We had a big, strong consolidation. If you start to close any daily candles at this level or higher, expect further expansion towards the upside. I haven't sold a single one. I'm gonna to continue to hold this one for a very, very long period of time. Okay, we can get into the rest of the normal memes. We can get into the normal coins as well. Um, let's just quickly wrap it up over here with what's happening with the next narratives, just so you can be a little bit forward uh, thinking and 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 realize what's coming, right? So Eric.eth says, uh, been sending instant and successful transactions on base all weekend for only three cents, right? This is the theorem thing uh, is pretty cool and reliable. And then you have Ansem over here looking at the next narratives. There's DGen, which is, of course, uh, this is 
think of it like a layer three. It's a layer two actually, but we're calling it a layer three because it's a layer two built on base, which is also a layer two. So I think base is the place to be, right? Base is one of the places that you want to start shifting some of your attention to, some of your real estate in your mind, shift it towards base, look for opportunities there. The reason why we want to focus on base is because we know that they have one of the biggest on-ramps to crypto, which is where the newbies are going to come. They're going to expose people to their ecosystem first, right? It's going to be an easy on-ramp into the sector. So that's something you want to look at. Another thing over here is uh, friend or friend tech. Some of you may know this, some of you may not know this. Friend tech is a social fi play, right? It's like Twitter or X, but ultimately you can buy shares of each person's profile. So if you want to go buy my profile, you can go there, you'll find me over there and you can, well, I don't know what it's priced at right now, but you can buy shares into my profile. Now, the reason I think this is a good play is um, it's died, right? To truth be told, it's died. So worse than NFTs. So as a risk to reward, if it's pretty much at zero and you put a little bit of capital into the top influencers now, buying uh, the likes of, you know, Ansem and other big names that in the space that have been gaining a lot of attention and you buy that now, how much lower can it go? It's already at zero. That means risk to reward. You have an asymmetrical bet. If Ansem is right over here and friend does start to take off again, I think that's a good play, right? So that's a little bit of alpha for you. You'd be front running me. I haven't even had a chance to open up my friend tech app again uh, and, and start to buy. Also, friend tech is built on base, right? So a whole nother thing, it's all tying in, right? It's all tying in uh, with the base ecosystem. Okay, and he says, yeah, I think SocialFi is going to be a big narrative in the next few months. Uh, post friend tech V2 launch, very similar uh, market meta to meme coins, but don't really know uh, what the best ways are yet to play this. So very, very early. The point is very, very, very early when it comes to something like that. All right, let's get into some of your altcoin requests. What can we chart? What can we bring up? I'll, while I wait, I'll quickly uh, do a very, very quick overview. Let me just scan through uh, the meme coin sector over here and just see uh, where we at. Is there anything of interest? He has DGEN. This is the DGEN token, right? So not a meme coin, but that's the chain that we're speaking of. Um, currently trading over there at just under $500 million market cap. So a big trading range over here. It didn't break out of the pennant. It continued to move sideways and hold that as a range. That is the level, right? What else do we have? Uh, let's see, where is BlackRock? How's BlackRock doing? Is it still ranging? So it's still ranging, coming back into the range low, probably a buy the dip opportunity over there. We wanna see this one range for quite some time, probably leading into uh, the end of April even. As long as it holds this range, then we can look for higher prices on BlackRock. I see their Twitter account still active. They are doing work there. Uh, Roost, how's Roost doing? This is of course one of the memes on base. So it is in a downtrend, uh, but also still consolidating. It depends how you want to view it. It's always difficult to time an entry on a brand new coin like this. Uh, but I think if you can buy anything around that four to five cent region, it's probably going to work out in the longer run, right? That is for Roost coin. All right, what else? What else do we have? Uh, quickly scanning through. All right, let's get into some of the other the other normal coins, right? The normal altcoins and cryptos. What do we have? What do we have? Uh, okay, I'm just scrolling through. Okay, Arweave. Let's have a look at Arweave. All right, guys, please do me a favor. Smash the like button. It really, really helps. Oh, and I also wanted to let you know, while you smash the like button, if we go down to um, Evo, there you go. Remember, a lot of you joined on Evo. Thank you so much for helping me. We are a few hundred away from beating run. So if you do want to assist us in beating run, all you have to do is go through down to uh, the Evo. Here we go, the Evo link. Click on that link. Um, as you can see over here, trade perps on alts. Uh, no KYC needed. You don't have to have any KYC and you can win an Apple Vision Pro. Okay, that's not me giving it away. That's Run giving away the Apple Vision Pro. My end of the bargain was I said that what I would do for you guys that, that uh, sign up on Evo is I've won $20,000 in Wealth Token when the Wealth Token launches. I will give some of that away to those of you who have joined. I'll pick a couple of lucky winners and we'll distribute that uh, because will have your MetaMask wallet, right? You have to use your MetaMask to connect to Evo. So I'll send those straight to, to those MetaMask wallets. All right. Also, what else? What else? Um, I wanted to let you know for the gummy airdrop, right? Gummy airdrop. 
Uh, you're running out of time. If you want to participate in the gummy airdrop, sign up, deposit to Blowfin. It's another non KYC required exchange. You don't have to KYC. They are going to be the only exchange that list uh, the gummy token when it does launch, which is going to be again on 420, right? They're going to be doing the snapshot before then. So you probably have even less time, right? Please, it's going to be an admin nightmare. So they need you to join ASAP uh, to participate in that snapshot. Okay. And then let's quickly go back into the charts over here. So are we, how's are we doing? Well, it hit our bottom level over here. Uh, this was the order block that led to the breakout over here, which is now consolidating. Uh, we said anywhere that comes into this region is a buy the dip opportunity. And we're looking at possibly a move up to $58. How's the other file storage doing? Okay. File coin, also holding the range levels, I'd wait for a sweep into 728 uh, if you don't already have exposure. We were initially long from down here. So we're gonna continue to hold that long, that longs on prime XPT. Uh, we're gonna keep that position open. All right, what else do we have? Um, okay. Soul. Okay, as always, you guys want Soul. Let's go to Solana. How's Solana doing? Uh, given all the... Um, downtime that they've had with it, within their project, or at least you can't uh, transact as rapidly as we were before. Same thing, right? Level to level, range low, 166 is probably the buying opportunity. Um, as long as it continues to hold that, that is your range low. That is support, buy support, sell resistance. Injective, also buy support, sell resistance. Here's your support level uh, coming in at $30, between 28 and $30. Phantom, Okay, key level over here. Let's see if this is gonna be a higher low for Phantom. Uh, only time will tell, but again, marking at level to level, uh, we said price needs to hold above 70 cents. That's ultimately the major support level and the level to hold. Stacks, let's go to Stacks as well. Stacks is usually a higher beta play uh, based on what we're seeing with Bitcoin and what Bitcoin's doing. So let's quickly go to Stacks. Okay, there we go. Very, very good, looking brilliant. Hold this level perfectly. That was your buy the dip opportunity. We did outline that on Friday show at $3, holding that level, looking for expansion towards uh, just under $5 is the next major resistance zone. Okay, Manta, haven't looked at Manta for quite some time. Let's see, how's Manta doing? Okay, Manta, yeah, you can see, haven't looked at it for quite some time, but look at how those range levels hold. Range low, support, range high, resistance, that's still been playing out, right? That's still been playing out. So a couple of days ago is probably the buying opportunity. Uh, new coins take time, guys, right? It takes time to uh, develop a little bit of momentum over there. Okay, Ondo, so looking again at real world assets. Um, let's see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uptrend. We showed this on Friday as well. This was the level to hold. That's the buy the dip opportunity. That is your support zone. You wanted to see uh, that prior um, resistance flip into support, which it did. So resistance came down, flipped into support, came back to test it as support, holding that level. We're looking for continuation higher and for that uptrend to continue. Higher highs and higher lows is the name of the game. So it is looking good. Let's look at Gala, Gala Gaming. We haven't seen gaming for quite some time. When will the gaming narrative come back? That is the question. Usually gaming is only later on in the cycle. Um, all right, level to level, range high, range low. But with that being said, I can notice the potential for a W formation taking place over here on Gala. So there it is, high or low. If you break and you close above 0 0.072, so above this range high, I would expect expansion and continuation. And the probability is very, very high that you'll take out uh, that previous high and it looks good for, for continuation. If not, and you fail that level, we'll expect that range uh, to persist, right? The range levels so far have been between 0 0.05 and on the top side, 0 0.07. Okay, Nia, let's have a look at Nia since I am still in that leverage long position on Nia. $20,000 up. Um, I said, if it doesn't get going, I may consider closing, right? So we said, if we, if it does roll over like this, this is what, what we have to be careful of on near that we don't see a lower high. We're coming into that zone right now. So it's time to pay attention on near. Really want to see near get above uh, really $8. If near can get and close a daily candle above $8, um, then I would say continuation to probably new highs or the yearly highs is a real possibility. 
If it sets in a low high over here, that's where I, made, I might have to consider closing that position, uh, at least the leverage position, because then we could roll over and come all the way back down, right? Uh, back into $5. Okay, render. Let's look at render. How is render doing? Haven't looked at render for quite some time as well. Okay, there's render. So render's going to need time. It's had a huge, massive move over here. Uh, it's consolidating at swing lows. Personally, I wouldn't want a long render over here. If I was holding longs from way, way earlier, I, I think it's okay. Continue to hold them, but this needs time to digest, right? Uh, it either needs to start to create a little bit of a range like that, or it needs to roll over and come back into the next major support, uh, which is going to be here at the 50% retracement level, uh, which lines up with the prior order block, uh, which also is missing uh, the wick fill over here, a little bit of a liquidity grab, which maybe you see a sweep below. So I would wait and be patient on uh, render for maybe six dollars okay guys i think that's it from me let's end it over there we don't want to make it too long thank you all so much for watching i'll see all of you on the next one remember sign up to blowfin uh, also do the uh, win the bitcoin competition by guessing the price of bitcoin and i'll see you all on tomorrow's show cheers for now